I and I assert that the issue before the assembly today is not merely a question of the settlement in a matter of Italian aggression. It is a question of collective security, of the very existence of the League, of the trust placed by states in international treaties, of the value of promises made to small states, that their integrity and independence shall be respected and assured. In a word, it is international morality that is at stake. Greetings, welcome to Ross Reporting Ahead of the Time, one stone at a time. And today we're celebrating the birthday of Mr. Emperor Haile Selassie I, the great emperor, the great master, the father of creation, the light of this world, the elect of Jah, the king of kings, the lord of lords, Nagusa Nagas, the Baba Janai, Haile Selassie I, Rastafari. And we are today celebrating because we are going to carry the message of Mr. Selassie I to come down to set the law, to set the rule, to set the order upon the land, upon the heads of the people who understand. So we've chosen an article from a very prominent United States publication that was put out shortly after Mr. Emperor Haile Selassie I seized from physical existence from the earth. <clears throat> It says Haile Selassie, the last emperor in the 3,000-year-old Ethiopian monarchy, who ruled for half a century before he was disposed by a military coup last September, died yesterday in a small apartment in his former palace. So my first question is, how did they know he died? His death, which is a very negative term, by the way, was played down by the military rules who succeeded him in Addis Ababa, who announced a normally scheduled radio newscast at 7 a.m. They said they had found, he had been found dead. They said that he had been found dead. Well, they actually didn't find his body. That's why they have to um, assume that it was because of an operation he underwent two months ago was the cause of this. They have to assume it because they don't have a body to do autopsy on. But how come they take the military coop's word for it? And who, who was reporting to who? See, it doesn't disclose this information. But it is apparent from reading this that somebody was behind this military group. It wasn't just a bunch of, you know, rat packs that worked within the Ethiopian government that decided to up throw, overthrow the dictator. No, it was an outside force that came in. <clears throat> and they're going to take their word for it. He had been found dead. No, he wasn't actually found dead. So it just discredits this whole article. And this is the main article that was written. The broadcast said that the once revered Lion of Judah. Now you tell me sitting here today, is he still once revered or is he forever revered? They said, um, even though they say his body had deteriorated, his son, his grandson had reported he had been in excellent health just recently. Official sources said the burial of the former emperor would be in the strictest privacy because there wasn't any burial. And they classified him as a medieval autocrat. So again, you have to see, this is, this is big because when somebody um, is said to have passed away, then they usually don't write negative reviews about the person they tend to celebrate the person's life because that's the appropriate thing to do. And it's very interesting that somebody of such, of such, of, of integrity, the fabric of integrity was woven into his character, of such integrity would write these types of things about a person of such integrity. So they say he was seized in a military coup. Well, where are the international observers? They say he was accustomed to Rolls Royces and a spacious palace. Well, this is the king and his kingly character. They could, uh, the emperor, however, could not seem to adapt to new concepts, and he showed more affection for his pet cheetahs and dogs. Again, just the mere fact that such negative things were written about, you know, whether you want to say that he was a great man or not, besides the point.